Milo, it's the final video. Yeah. You excited, buddy? All right, thanks, buddy. I have to go film now. I'll see you later. Hey guys, welcome back and welcome to the finale of the Ross Joss Master Core Series. Do I look sharp today? I got a haircut. We've been filming for a few months, so my hair got kind of long. Throughout this whole entire series, I taught you guys how to get started in the industry. We did care design, portraits, landscapes, and today we're gonna end with a bang by painting a cinematic story illustration. Throughout the whole video, I'm gonna teach you guys my favorite tips and tricks on how to light the scene, make it really beautiful and vibrant and cinematic, and then we'll take everything that we made in the entire series and put together in a beautiful presentation package. So without further ado, let's do it. Story and presentation. Probably the most important aspect when you're trying to create a beautiful image because nine times out of 10, the artists around you know how to draw pretty faces, do pretty stuff. But what's gonna set you apart from everyone else is your ability to tell a story and present your ideas in the best way possible. Throughout this whole series, we learned a lot about design. In Faye's design, and then we try to tell her story through the portrait, through the landscape. And for this one, I kind of wanted to take a more cinematic approach. I wanted to depict something more intimate and we can actually feel the image. And we wanna have an emotional impact to whoever we're giving it to. Yeah, yeah so I've worked on the piece about 80% uh, already, so I'll show you what I have. Wow. Oh, check it out. This is Faye and her master Ame. And so this is the piece that we're working on today. Throughout all the previous videos, I started mostly from scratch, the beginning, the foundation, the basics. And for this one, I wanna start somewhere near the end so I can show you all the finishing techniques, all the lighting, all the glitz and glam, and how to make it beautiful and cinematic. And I really like it. You know, it's really awesome. I think it's a, uh, my new favorite painting. And in the previous video, I talked about how to get started with napkin sketches. And so I did some napkin sketches for this and a quick refresher on what they are. They're just little composition sketches that you can scribble on a napkin and give it to your client and they can understand what's going on. They're not meant to be perfect, but just to get the big ideas across. We have Faye and her master Ame. There's this really big tree and it's really beautiful, you know, it's divided, but it feels like they're harmonious together. This one is a more close-up shot, kind of laying against each other, looking opposite directions. Yeah, maybe this one is a phase head is rested on Ame. It may look too romantic, which wasn't my purpose, but I wanted to explore anyway. It's good to get the big picture and then zoom in on the action. So this is like the big picture, and then we get more intimate, like this. All film, TV, or horizontal format, and so, I think this one, we have a lot of opportunity and potential to create something really beautiful. Yeah, we have Faye leaning against her master Ame. This will really capture the cinematic impact that I'm going for. I think my main goal here was to show the relationship between master and protege. <laughs> I want them to feel like a unit, you know? So I kind of want to incorporate some of Ame's color with Faye. See how effective color is? I just kind of added a little bit of Ame's color and it already feels more like a cohesive unit. Maybe I'll relay some of uh, Faye's color. Maybe I'll be hearing here. I would say this piece is about 80% done. You know, we have the concept there. I'm gonna finish it with you guys and show you guys some of my favorite finishing techniques. In the previous episode, I talked a lot about the importance of having a clean shape. Ame and Faye is on his own shape and we can do whatever we want with the background. Remember, the important thing, to always experiment, never settle. You know, you wanna shock your system. And so I have this really cool image over here. See how this plays into the overall impact and mood. Ooh, that's kinda cool. I'm gonna blur a little bit. Ooh, check that out. Let's try another one for fun. Yeah, and here's another mood. The goal is to kind of be a master at your craft and keep playing around, keep giving the director or the client a lot of options, always be versatile and always be open-minded. Originally, I was thinking something really beautiful like this. Let's go back to the original. In the previous episode as well, I talked about color range. And so we're gonna apply some of that on this piece right now. And let's extract oh. the white. Nice, look at that. Now there's a lot more vibrancy. When you're trying to paint beautiful paintings, I would think each shape is its own puzzle piece. For this moment of Amin Fei, 
it represents intimacy, it represents master protege, it represents something a lot more elegant and calm. We have a background which is a lot more stimulating, and so those contrast each other and emphasize each other. Yeah, I'm just gonna work on this a little bit and then I'll check back in soon with my next favorite finishing technique. So here's the progress so far, and I kind of wanted to repeat some of these branches over. One thing a lot of people ask me is how do I get really nice brush strokes? You know, how do I emulate what a traditional looking oil painting is? So one of my favorite tools I love to use is the mixer brush. And you can see right here that there's a lot of um, JPEG artifacts from the photograph that looks kind of messy. And so in your tools, there's this thing called mixer brush right here. Mixer brush. That brings you a new menu up here and you can use any brush that you want. And my favorite brush to use the mixer brush with is this kind of hairy, <laughs> hairy bristle brush right here. And what you want to do is just, ooh, look at that. Now all the facts are gone. Now it looks like a real oil painting. We're just mixing all the colors that's inside our painting. Look at all these kind of ugly artifact, you know, just blend that, you know, blend it a little bit like that. If you have a hair shine like that, you kind of blend it around. Ooh, look at that. And I love to use it for core shadows as well. For example, you know, if we have like a core shadow like that, that we want to blend, we use the mixer brush. Before and after. Over here, before and after. You see this right here? Really ugly, right? It's very kind of photographic. It has a lot of artifacts and so, Nice, very cool. So I'm just gonna keep working on this a little more and I'll check back in with the next one. Hey guys, welcome back. And here's the progress of our piece so far. It's looking good. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite techniques, my secret weapon that a lot of people don't really know about. And I think it's super handy for any illustrator, any creator, and that is Lightroom. Yes, Adobe Lightroom is a separate program. We're gonna take the painting at this stage right now and put it inside Lightroom. So I'm gonna save it real quick and I'll save it, uh, blah, blah. Open it right now and uh, wait for it to turn on. So now it's inside Lightroom, and if you're scared about learning a new program, don't worry, it's really user intuitive. I'm gonna show you why I use it and why it's so effective. And these are all my presets that I've gathered from over the years. Kind of click one. Ooh, you see that? I'm gonna click another. Oh, that's another one. Let's pick another one. Now it's kind of like a more vintage photograph. There's so many filters. And then on this side, we can play with the temperatures. If I want something a lot more blue, Ooh. or maybe a lot more pink and purple. So let's pretend that I really love this. And so we are just going to export it. Set up a different mood and see whether you like that more, or maybe go further into the direction that you originally had. This feels like a painting. But my main intention was to depict a cinematic moment. I want this to look like a scene in a film. And so what I would do now is place a vignette. What a vignette does is kind of graze your eye to the focal point, knock everything back and makes you focus on the main attention. So let's do that. Let's set it to uh, multiply over here. Gorgeous. Before and after, you see that? Before and after. Now it feels less like a busy painting, you know, where everything has a lot of kind of stimulus and more like a cohesive cinematic moment. And the cherry on top is the color dodge. Yes, after I vignette it, I think it's time for some sweet, sweet light. And so I am going to add a little bit of a light bloom. You ready? This is literally my favorite part. Let's do it. One, two, three. Ooh, before and after. And a lot of film, a lot of TV shows do this. They kind of grade the image, give you something elegant. We are trying to depict an intimate moment between master and protege, and this light just does wonders. Add a little bit right here as well. Ooh, just like some light peeking through. Gorgeous. 
Just be careful with this light bloom, you know, you don't want to kind of distort out your painting. I actually really like this piece, guys. Ah, uh, give me a high five. But I feel like it's missing some grit. You know, this is a forest scene. We're out in the open with maybe a lot of particles and dust and pollen in the air. And it needs a little more, you know, a little more noise. And so another favorite technique that I love doing is adding some kind of stardust, some particles in. I'm gonna put this uh, star field in. Da -da -da -da. Let's set this to, to lighten. Ooh, ah, oh, before, after. You can see that little tiny speck of dust that just makes it so beautiful. Ooh, I better not get carried away with this. I'll probably uh, work on it for a few more hours, so uh, check out the final. Hey guys, welcome back and I hope you enjoyed the final cinematic piece. It's actually uh, one of my favorite paintings now. I'm like really proud of it. And since we have all this work that we did, it's time to lay it out beautifully. In school, painting, designing, and drawing was half the work. And the other half is being able to present it beautifully, talk about your ideas, and elaborate everything you were thinking about while you're making the piece. I'm gonna show you guys my college graduation portfolio and barely anyone has ever uh, seen these. So, uh, shh. <laughs> For school, we had events where clients came in and they talked to us and they hired us for the summer internship or maybe post-graduation. And here is a page I did of uh, Nima. Ooh, yeah, this is a page in my actual graduation portfolio. And this basically encapsulates everything I'm about. Yeah, I love my characters mixed with cool layouts, graphics, and there's even like a stat sheet over here, there's an icon. And here's a one of Masamune. He is a character in the Nima universe. And Jane's gonna hand me my actual portfolio over here. Oh, snap! Yeah, this is actually a very secret project that I plan to do after Nima, so don't show it around too much. These are like metal screws, and I just wanted to show my professionalism because that matters a lot to me. You know, presentation, presenting my work in the best light. I have not seen this in like a year, and I'm kind of uh, still really happy of how it looks, you know? These are some environments that I did. <laughs> We'll be creating one of these layout pages today and I'm gonna teach you guys how to lay out your art and ideas in an effective and aesthetic way. So, this is what we have this here for. Yeah! I'm doing my pages in Photoshop. There are other programs that you can do this efficiently with, like InDesign or Illustrator, but I'm really used to Photoshop and I feel like a lot of my audience has Photoshop, so we're gonna assemble it in here. This represents a spread. It's two pages and I want the viewer and the audience to experience a story within these two pages and so we're gonna design them side by side. A common size for your portfolio is 11 by 17. So each of these pages are 11 by 17. First, understand what kind of page you're gonna create. For example, this is gonna be a character design page for Faye. First thing I would do is grab everything that you would wanna show onto this image. So here's the Faye's full body. <laughs> Got a pose here, you know, just lay it in there. Shove them anywhere for now and then uh, we'll assemble it in a second. So this is her earring and her symbol, and I thought it's a very cool design that we can definitely play against this whole entire page. We have everything that we would want on this page laid out here, and it's our job to try to kind of configure it in a very nice and aesthetic way. First thing that I would do is, what is this page about? This page is about Faye. So what's my best image of Faye? I would say it's either this rendering right here or the portrait. And so I would make that the biggest. Think about big, medium, small. And right now I'm laying down my big component. If you're like me, I read from left to right. So that's why I'm designing from the left to the right. Let's shove everything on this side so we have a clean page to work with. Let's tell the audience who she is. And so her name is Faye. So we're gonna write Faye. Fonts are such a tricky thing, you know, they can make your design even better or they can make your art even worse. It's all right, I feel like there are better options. She's a magician, you know, she has magic and it's elegant, so let's try to pick something a little more elegant. Let's try a, uh... ooh, check that out. That's pretty cool. Let's maybe add her symbol on here. 
And one thing I love adding is some Japanese text because I just love the aesthetic of it. You know, I love anime. I, I see this as an anime and adding this adds a lot of authenticity as well as kind of like the aesthetic that I'm going for. And this text means magician. And let's add some icons. That looks great. That's definitely a step in the right direction. And a good designer knows how to repeat elements, right? They know how to take something and use it to the best way possible. And for example, I found a great opportunity with their earring over here. I can kind of echo the shape around and it gives it an aesthetic. And what I would do here is add some text. So let's write something. Hi, <laughs> I am Faye. I am a magician. Fear me. <laughs> also, Milo is cute. And we're gonna try to repeat this a little bit. This is a block of text, and this is a sample area of where her description would go. The point is to get all your opponents on the canvas and then we can decide what to do with it later. A good rule of thumb is to treat each section as a block. This is one block, this is another block, and this is another block. Very important that we put some parameters in a grid to make sure everything is laid out neatly. So you wanna line things up and you wanna make sure that they're inside their blocks. And right now it looks like there are a big block, there are medium blocks, and what you wanna do, you wanna make small blocks. Big, medium, small. And now this is the flow of the image, you know? Left to right. So what is the best thing to put inside these blocks that work well? I would say it's the portraits. Portraits are kind of vertical and it looks really nice. It doesn't compete with the main image too much. Now let's take our guidelines away. Awesome, it's coming together. You see that? Think of your blocks as invisible parameters for you to kind of lay all your art on. And uh, let's kind of adjust this a little bit so it fits better. And, and now we did half the page and the other half is kind of completing the story. What do we want to say from here? And since this side is a lot more kind of structured, it's more rigid and we have a description here, let's let loose. Let's add a complete contrast to this side. Let's add a lot of dynamics, you know, let's add poses and variation and make this side extra spicy. And so we get the full story of who Faye is. We're gonna make this a big shape. So it's gonna be really big like that. Put this one smaller. Nice! Wow, uh, that was actually uh, uh, pretty quick. I like that. Faye is attacking an enemy while showing her sweet, sweet booty. Just kidding. Family show. And I feel like when the user turns the page to the spread, they understand what's going on. It's clear, everything is aesthetic and everything is located inside a block and it's pleasing to look at. That's the most important thing, you know? I think one thing's missing because I really love this earring shape and we need to repeat this over here in a nice way. There we go. Now I feel like it ties the page a little more better, you know? Our eye is here, we hit the title, and then we go through here, we go through up there, and like that. And we're designing the experience, we're designing the story, we're designing the development of Faye. I'll include this character template on my website for free, so you guys can put your characters in, let me know what you think, and also create your own. And tag me so I can uh, look at it too. This is a kind of a more layout development page. Let's go for something different. Let's go for something more impactful and cinematic. So I have this piece that I recently finished, you know? Let's put it on this block. Ooh. I love these pieces because they can kind of fill up the whole page and speak for itself. I really want to showcase it. I don't want anything to compete with this image. On this side, we're going to have a little description. Yeah, let's quickly uh, come up with a name for this piece. How about uh, silence? You know, they look like they're sleeping. It's probably silent around there. Ew. I like this. I feel like it's not on the same wavelength as this. And so let's uh, kind of change the style. Ooh, this one. You see how much text impacts us? This is edgy text. Something beautiful and poetic. And it's missing an accent. You know, it's missing that kind of a beautiful small detail. Yeah, so I'm gonna do something that works super well. That's kind of cheesy, but like it gets the job done. I'm gonna sign it. Silence. There we go, that was the right curve. 
I don't even know what this is, guys. Is this a P or an R or, or a balloon? I don't know, but it looks cool. And that's what matters for right now. We're just filling in the assets of the page. I'm gonna try something kind of uh, different over here real quick. Oh, beautiful. I changed the balloon to white and now it's, uh, it's a different aesthetic. We open this page, right? We open this page and we see the beautiful cinematic impact of silence and the balloon. <laughs> Yeah, I would be pretty happy if I flipped open to the spread. And so let's kind of review what we did before. Development sketch of Faye. You know, we get the journey, we get who she is, we get the name, a descriptor, and then a cinematic spread. Oh my gosh, this is so impactful. I'm like, I'm like in this right now. You know, we get the story, we get the simplicity. If you are trying to show your audience something or you're trying to show the client who you are, Making these pages, layout design, story elements is so important and I feel like you'll land the job with like that. Like this person gets it, this person understands what it is to provide an experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole series. I had so much fun making it. Let's take one final look at everything we made in this master course. <laughs> Milo, it's over. Buddy, it's over. Milo. Hey guys, welcome back, and I hope you guys enjoyed the final episode of the Master Course series. Oh my god, that was five episodes. Time flew by so fast. First, I kind of introduced you how to get started on your art journey, and then I revealed my new character, Faye. We made a cool page and painting for her. We made a portrait. We put her in a landscape with her master, and then we made a cinematic story scene with Faye and her master, Amit. Thank you so much Google and YouTube for giving me this wonderful opportunity for me to give quality content for free. And if you wanna take a stab at building your own character pages like we just did, I have the template for free on my website. And if you guys get inspired by watching these videos and create your own character and layout pages and environments, please show me, you know, tag me on Instagram or come by my Discord and share your work. You know, we're all students there willing to learn. Thank you so much again for joining our magical adventure. Nima's and Faye's book will be out next year, so keep an eye out for it. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember, every day is a color dodge day.